Today, I'm gonna go through everything I got while I was at Founders Crossing and Antique Depot. So Founders Crossing is in Bedford. Uh, it's a really fun place. I had only ever been there one other time. Um, I got some really fun stuff there. They had a couple booths uh, that there were things I wanted, but I didn't feel like driving around looking for an ATM, especially because when I'm out shopping, my time is super valuable because as you guys have probably seen, I pack a lot of places into one day. If I'm gonna drive that far, I don't wanna waste time driving around, looking for an ATM, doing all that, and I don't like carrying cash on me, sorry. It's just not my thing, especially because if I lose my receipt, I like to have a uh, digital copy. So anyway, that's boring. What's not boring is this incredible Moody Mary bank I got. Um, this thing is so fun. It's made by Lego Japan. It comes in a bunch of different colors. Now, normally they're kind of beat up when you get them. Um, this one was in pretty good condition. It's missing its stopper, but I love the fact that you turn it around and it's got all the different uh, moods on it. It has a little paint loss. I love its weird fuzzy hair. I only paid $10 for this. now. I've only ever had one in perfect condition. I mean, it was pristine and it sold for $64, $65, excuse me. But of course that includes US shipping, which is anywhere from nine to $14 on an item of this weight, which is about two pounds. Now, the next thing I got, I couldn't resist. I definitely paid a little bit more than I should have, honestly. I paid $12.50 but I couldn't resist this print. I'm a huge fan of the tin litho. I love the little children's dishes, but the girls in the little kitten suits are something I'd never seen before. And then what double sold me was the anthropomorphic flowers. I mean, it was so cute. Now it's not a full set, but it's definitely on the harder to find side. Um, whereas I paid $12.50 for it, there's no way I'm gonna double my money on it, but that's fine. Just because it was so unique, I couldn't resist. And this one is made by Ohio Art. They made a bunch of little tin litho children's dish sets and like the tops and just a bunch of tin toys. And uh, you can, the way I was able to look up the pattern, I only ever saw one on eBay sold, is they have a number with the print, um, the uh, design number on it. So number 107, just so stinking cute. And even though the other set I saw um, went for, a like a substantial amount for the tin litho. I mean, they don't sell for like crazy, crazy money. Some tin toys sell for crazy, crazy money, like big bucks. And the thing is that even though it was more of a complete set, it wasn't as in good condition as this is. A lot of the times they're pretty uh, rusty and crusty around the edges. The little children's mug. I only paid $5 for this. I've had different ones of these. I just think they're so cute. Um, I love the fact that it's got the kitschy little face with the eyelashes. I only paid $5.50 for it. It's one of those things that it won't sell for much, but I'll still be able to about double my money after fees. Mm, maybe a couple cents less, but it's just a fun little mug. It's multi-purpose. Honestly, all my pen holders and stuff are mugs or planters. They are made in Japan. As I usually say, deer, Bambi, all the vintage deer. I mean, definitely a hot commodity. It's one of the things that are on the quicker selling side. Now, I normally don't pick up single shakers, but look at this vintage Bambi shaker. It is 1950s Japan and I paid $8 for it happily. It was just so unique. I'd actually never seen this set before and I don't remember seeing it and it was in good condition. Now, since deer are so popular and especially the kitschy Bambi um, at $8, I was like, you know what? Since, especially since I've never seen it before, I'm gonna go ahead and scoop it up. And again, it is made in Japan. The next thing I got maybe steps away from a lot of my shop style, but I'm a big fan. I couldn't resist this uh, brass covered dish with the jewels on it. It is made in India. It's not like kitschy as I would normally see, but I have a lot of dishes and like jars like this on my vanity. I just think they're so fun, especially with the colored jewels. It was $10. I like to switch it up every once in a while, even though it's not my normal kitschy style, I still think it's a super fun item. Um, there's so many places you could put this. Again, this is one of those things where I bought and I was like, hey, if this doesn't sell, it's gonna end up on my bedroom and my vanity if we can clear enough space.
So that was Founders Crossing. I paid $46 for all of it. Um, it was fun. I, I will go back there probably at some point. It probably won't be for a long time. Uh, Bedford is kind of off the beaten path, especially now that I'm back in the DC area. But in the meantime, we're gonna go back and look at what I got at Antique Depot. Love, I love, love, love everything that's happening here. The mid-century, the kitsch, the mod, the anthropomorphic poodle, the Hollywood Regency, everything about this little print is adorable. I paid $7 for it, honestly, $6.95. But it was so freaking cute that I was like, there's no way there's not someone waiting to find this and frame this and put it in their bathroom or their powder room. I mean, honestly, if it didn't sell, I probably would. I think it would be really fun in like a gilded frame or something, just something totally over the top. Uh, now, I will say a lot of like poodle stuff like this with the, the makeup and stuff, a lot of makeup themed stuff is harder to find. So I thought it was a safe bet. I mean, it is unframed, which is kind of nice because it leaves the buyer um, room to decide what they want to do with it. It's also easier to ship. I hate shipping frames with that flat glass. It adds so much packing material. Um, so for $7, I scooped this up. We all love a good kitschy lamb planter. Now this one is definitely far from perfect. It's got some imperfections in the paint here, uh, but I only paid $6.25. So, you know, whereas it's not perfect, I kind of felt like somebody who was going to repurpose it maybe, or actually maybe use it, um, you know, cause you can do fun things with it. I've seen people bejewel them. I've seen people give them little outfits. They're super fun to uh, repurpose. I love people's creativity when it comes to it. Honestly, I just, I don't know. I have a hard time uh, repurposing vintage items but it's six dollars and 25 cents i thought i'd still be about that able to double my money i priced it at 14. which on the condition isn't crazy i mean sometimes i see these out for crazy amounts of money and i'm like you guys that does not sell for that much because it is a more common item but again the little lambs are always super popular one thing you've probably heard me say this holiday season time and time again is that stockings have been kind of a tough sell However, this snowman, I could not resist. He even has his original tag from the store. He was originally 98 cents. Now, he was $13.95, he was $14. I know, it was a little much, but he was in pretty great condition. And this kitschy snowman, I just could not resist. I'm a sucker for snowmen. I also find that snowmen are harder to find, especially the super kitschy ones. Next up, I got this Arnart red polka dot bow tie elephant. Now he is missing his babies on chain. I usually see him in purple if I see him at all. And for this guy, I paid $15 and happily. Um, he, he is a more popular, he's on the easier to find side, more common side of the Arnart red polka dot bow tie gang. But still, some of these go for crazy money. Honestly, the elephant doesn't really. Um, but he was in such good condition. Again, it's really easy to lose the paint on these. And I just thought he was, uh, kind of unique. The fact that he was this grayish blue instead of purple. I always scoop up red polka dot bow tie if it's anywhere near, uh, profitable price, just because they are super collectible. And of course he's got his stamp on the bottom of his foot. I did price him at about 34. I've had the purple one before. I sold him for about 34 when he was in great condition. Uh, I do believe it will go for that, especially because of the paint on the face and the bow tie being in good condition. Speaking of red polka dot bow tie gang, this was quite a find. Now it has been modified a little. Someone, uh, it is as found, someone glued rhinestones and little pearls and flowers on their hair. However, the cats with the red polka dot bow tie are incredibly hard to find, sell for really good money, and super collectible. No surprise there. I paid $17 for the whole set and happily. Now, I've seen them priced at, on eBay for crazy amounts. There's obviously different versions of it. Um, I will say the one that probably goes for the most are, is the orange one. Uh, I'd never seen this exact one before. I've seen, of course, the little guys, but this uh, weird size cat is kind of unusual because I feel like normally they're a little bit taller. 
so unique and again that kind of pearlized glaze it has some imperfections on the side now i looked at so many comparables when it came to this item uh, but i hadn't seen this complete set and of course even though the paint's pretty much all there it has been modified a little so i priced it at about 75 dollars um, which seems steep, but when you look at some of the sold prices on the red polka dot bow tie cats, especially with the paint being there, some of them are way higher. And I would say the average price for the cats is about 65, but of course this one had its babies on chain, um, which makes it a little bit more on the desirable side. And I mean, I can't stress enough how hard it is to find with this paint still here more cats this rose lane cat i paid 13 dollars for it now i love the rose lane siamese cats they do also make napco now the one the one difference is you'll see they will be marked california usa or rose lane um unless they're napco in which case they'll say japan and have the silver napco sticker I passed up on a couple of the Rose Lane Siamese cats while I was in Texas over the summer, and yes, I'm still thinking about it. Um, I will be almost able to double my money. I will guess this will go for about $25, $26. Um, all the rhinestones are there, which is nice, and it's not all scratched up, which is harder to find on this matte finish. We all know I love a good squeak toy, super collectible, super easy to ship, throw some tissue on it, sometimes some bubble, let it go. Sansa is definitely a better selling one. I'd say 99% of the time I get Santa squeaks. They sell almost immediately, especially if they still work. I paid $6 for him. It was a no brainer. Uh, there's so many different ones. This one's by Santa Toy. He does have some wear, but again, I think he will move quickly. Now there was another rubber Santa Claus I got. However, I got really confused where I got him from and I accidentally already listed him and he already sold. Uh, so he sold for 14, I bought him for six. So sorry, he wasn't in this haul actually. I thought I got him at Mother Tucker's. Um, I did get a little mixed up at one point doing all this pre-recording and shopping. And of course I did so many big shopping trips in between moving. It was kind of insane and the holidays, um, so did make a little blooper on that one. Next up, in a 50% off booth, I found something that people always ask me for, which are these rubber deer, but there are ones that have a colored tint. Now, this one isn't the one that's all blue. Um, there's ones that are like mostly blue. There's pink, there's purple. They're super hot and sell for some, some sell for really, really good money, like crazy money. Like one recently sold that was like all blue almost and in pristine condition. It sold for almost $90 on eBay. So of course everyone's running to jack up the prices on their asking, um, but that one was pristine, I must say. Now for this guy, I paid $10. Now on my normal rubber deer that I buy like this, I usually sell them anywhere between nine and $13 say probably 11 12 being the average this one has the blue streak i would say the average sold price around these are anywhere from 30 to 40 dollars sometimes you see them for a little bit more sometimes you see them for a little bit less he's not perfect but he's not bad he definitely has some wear the rubber is relatively easy to clean um you know they scrub them and stuff i honestly get really scared that i'm gonna damage them in some way because one time i did accidentally damage a rubber item cleaning it i was a little too aggressive and i just am not a professional cleaner so um i do kind of like when they have some kind of show of uh where you know some love i mean this is from the 60s for goodness sake it's 2023 the fact that it's made it this long in this good condition is good enough for me i only paid ten dollars for him i priced him at about 38 of course you know that includes my u.s shipping fee which for something of this size and weight usually well really weight costs about three four to five dollars um so you know at ten dollars i felt confident especially because again like i said earlier deer are super collectible super go quick and especially the rubber ones um whenever i have the little reindeer they always sell almost instantly i wanted to be fair but reasonable uh, 38 I felt like was decent enough. It was kind of in the average of the sold prices of this specific version of the blue. But wait, 
there's more. I got a set of three for $25. Now, they're all kind of different prices. This is like the more common little rubber one. I love the fact that he's uh, kind of prancing along there. And he's got the little glitter accent. His face is pretty defined. I paid $25 for the set of three. Now, this one obviously will be the least expensive. And I'll add like maybe a dollar or so because this one does have its bell. I do like this kind of thicker rubber deer versus the thinner rubber deer. I just always find that their faces and features are more defined. Um, but this one is what really sold me. Now, obviously I'll be able to make my money back pretty much on those two alone. But this one with the, the blue, again, harder to find and super desirable. I kind of felt like the chances of one of the blue deer selling really quick were high and then someone was gonna be upset when they saw it in a couple days and be like, dang. So more blue and a different size too, which is fun. And the last thing I got, it's been a while since I picked up a fish planter or any uh, American bisque, USA pottery, you can tell by the bottom, um, especially because it doesn't say Japan. Now he does have some crazing and stuff, but he was only $6 and I find that fish usually sell pretty well. So I said, what the heck, and grabbed him anyway. He was pretty unique. I hadn't had this exact version before. And it's been a while since I picked up a fish, actually. I went kind of crazy on the fish salt and pepper shakers for a second. And I got stuck with a few. And I was kind of like, all right, I'm fished out. But that was all I got. That was my last pre-recorded shopping trip in Pennsylvania. So tomorrow morning when you guys see me at 10 a.m., we will be somewhere new, somewhere different. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to go to all new places. There's a lot of oldie but goodies. I only moved about an hour away from where I was living, so it's not that dramatic. In that shopping hall, I paid $128 for everything you saw, and I am excited for all that's to come, so thank you guys again for your support, and I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m.